What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back. We get to talk to TJ Brown right now. He will be fighting Shaley, Shaley, excuse me, Shaylian Nur Dan Biecki on. You June did better 25. with that name than I did. I was <laughs> going to challenge you, TJ, to see if once I said it, if you could repeat it back to me. I rehearsed it a few times. I didn't put in the whole John Anik 100 times repeat the name, but I said it about five to ten times about ten minutes ago. I still keep stumbling. No, no disrespect to your opponent. Yeah, of course. How you doing, man? How are things? Good? Everything's good, man. Uh, day's going great. I did uh, strength conditioning this morning. I uh, had MMA striking at uh, Glory MMA, and then I just got done talking to my uh, sports, psychologist a bit, sports psychologist a bit. So, man, everything's good, man. It's been a good day so far. Yeah. If we can pry, what's discussed in a session with a sports psychologist? I'm sorry? If you don't mind us prying, what is discussed in a session with a sports psychologist? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I really like this guy I'm working with. You know, uh, he's just, just it just helps to improve me as a fighter and as a man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm out there, I'm out here chasing this perfect performance, man. You know, uh, you know, although I won my last two fights, if, if I were to score them, you know, I, I'd give myself a six out of ten of, of the best version of me. And and I, I'm just striving for that ten out of ten, man. And I think uh, the sports psychologist get, will be just the boost that gives me that. Does he tell you, yeah, you can get there? Or does he tell you, hey, there's nothing wrong with settling for a nine? Because I'm wondering, in pursuit of good question. Very good question. A ten, like, what is a ten? Is a ten a, a, a seven-second knockout, like, like uh, Jorge Masvidal, or is it a dominating performance, you know, like 30 to 24 over 15 minutes? What is the perfect 10, and, and would you settle for the 9 or, or the 8.5 or, you know? Uh, good question. Uh, so so for me, uh, you know, the perfect performance for me is just me me getting in my zone, going there with the uh, the confidence and swagger that, that I know I'm capable of doing. You know, it's just like, man, it if you've been in some of the rooms, you know, and seen me spar, or seen some of my performances, you know, I'm, man, I'm out there killing it. And others, I'm kind of lackluster or there's no, there's no lack of dog. Just, I think there's a lack of focus and uh, a bit of maybe performance anxiety, whatever it is, you know. Uh, but uh, for me, a 10 out of 10, just going out there performing, you know, for, and, and this fight, you know, it's going out there and piecing this guy up, getting a 50K bonus and uh, walking home with my son. I love it. All right. Um, tell me about working with James Krause and Glory MMA. The um, It seems like that's one gym that you definitely won't lose sight of focus. I remember talking to James Krause and he given us like five bullet points of what needs to be addressed. Uh, he definitely doesn't like anyone dogging it. That's for sure. So it seems like it's hard for one not to get the most out of every training session. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, man, he's he's just a great coach. You know, he's a great mental uh, mental coach, and and man, he's got the X's X's and O's down to a T. You know, and, and man, it's not just James. You know, I I love James and and what he brings, but man, he's also got a room full of killers down here. So, you know, it, it really brings out the best of me. You know, there and there, there's 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 training sessions where I'm sitting here, and I'm like second guessing staying in you know or i'm tired and beat up and or maybe maybe a bit even nervous you know because i know i'm fit to go in there and get after it but man that that's what you need you know that that and that, that's what i need you know and 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 as much as i can get in that uncomfortable state uh, i i feel like the more comfortable i'm going to be come up on out of my own selfish curiosity does the performing anxiety on your level you know as a professional price fighter does it have anything to do with social media i'm just curious uh man not that not for me that uh, i'm not saying that's not everybody but not for me you know a lot of mine is just you know i, I was talking to my 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 uh my psychologist about this and it's like man i i envy these guys the these young cats that don't have kids not really a lot of responsibilities you know they're just out there having fun you know and, and, and that's really just never been the case for me. You know, I've been raising a, a son my entire career, uh, just me and him, you know, and, and I had to win, you know, and there's a pressure that comes with that. While, 
well, that is a motivator. Uh, it's also a stressor, you know. So just trying to balance that, man, and, and, and finding out what, 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 how to bring out the best version of me. Yeah, because I was thinking about this. Like, after a fight, I guess it's pretty cool when you do go on your social media and tons of people are giving you attaboys, fist bumps, you know, uh, sharing with you that they made money off a of bet or whatever. It's, it's probably the greatest feeling ever, you know. And if there was no social media, once your fight's over and you exit the arena, I, I guess it kind of all ends there, you know, until you have physical interaction again somewhere else. Right. And at the same time, when things don't go your way, whether it's a loss or an embarrassing moment, I mean, everyone's in there in your face yeah. telling you oh, you yeah. cost you money and oh, you yeah. suck or whatever. That's why I was yeah, I was wondering yeah. if the sports psychologist had anything to do with that, man, because social media can be such a great thing, but such a poison pill. You're, you're exactly right, man. I, I couldn't agree more. And I've, I've been on both sides of that coin, you know, uh, on the winning side and the losing side. So I know from experience how it feels. But, you know, lucky for me, man, I, I, I learned out who my real ones were a long time ago, you know. So I don't get up, caught up in so much of what this guy from Indiana thinks or some clown. You know, I, I, don't, get, I don't get caught up in this, you know. Uh, this is not a problem for me, you know. Uh, I, I found out I got my heart broken a long time ago, finding out, finding out that these fans aren't my friends, you know, and, and who my real friends are. And the ones that love me are going to be there either way, right? Yeah. TJ, so that 10 performance that you're talking about, um, can it not only help psychologically, but on paper, sometimes we feel like a 10 performance, instead of making one jump in the rankings or you take a couple more steps, is that also part of wanting – the pursuit of the 10 uh, finish? Uh, of course. You know, uh, most importantly is for me. You know, I mean, that, that that's what I'm chasing, man. Like, uh, I've been in this sport for a while, you know, and, and I just – I want to go out and show the world really how good I am. You know, I'm out you, – you you ask these guys in the gym how good I am. You know, you, you ask my coaches that have been here, man. I, I just haven't really been out there, been able to show the world how good I am. And I just want to do that so bad. But I agree with you that uh, – you know, one of those good stellar performance or big major highlight knockouts, they do skyrocket you up the ranking, which means more money for me. So that that, that is definitely a big reason behind it as well. The little cherry on top of that 10 performance is when Joe Rogan pulls you in or Daniel Cormier or Michael Bisping for that interview. You ever think about what you're going to say in that situation and what I, I do. that comes? I, I, I do. I, I do. Uh, you know, uh, my good buddy Bryce Mitchell, you know, he's always got some uh, good things to say in the post-fight interview, whether it's something to kind of spark your attention or or some words of encouragement or or uh, something that may change the world, you know. And I, I've tried to do that, you know, but, man, I, I get in there so hyped up after my win. It's it's hard to really hold, my, hold myself together. When you think about this fight and you think about the outcomes, the possible outcomes, are they always kind of roughly the same? Like, do you see this fight going one way, or have you thought of multiple ways that you're going to stop this guy? Yeah, so so I, I know how I'm going to win. You know, I I I'm I I don't want to give too much away, but man, I'm going to go out there and jab this man to death. And uh, you know, it, the only way for him to win is to sit and hug me for for three rounds and hold me on the ground for three rounds, like. And dude, there's nobody in the in the featherweight division that can hold me down. You know, I I hate to sound arrogant, but it is what it is. Like you can't hold me down. You know, so I, I don't see how he wins. You know, but um, uh, but past that, what I'm really shooting for is me just going out there and perform, man. Get be in the zone, go out there and just dot this guy up, man, and really just uh, show everybody my capabilities. Tell me more about Bryce Mitchell. He doesn't train with you guys, right? He's got his own thing going. Yeah. In so, so or Bryce, you go down there. Yeah. So me and Bryce came up together. Like that's that's my boy. You know, we uh we trained our entire career with each other. You know, in, in Arkansas, and uh, that's my boy. You know, and uh, I just what was best for me is for me to be over here at Glory and Camps. You know, it's just good for my mental. You know, I can just really just focus on fighting and. And focus on myself and kind of get away. But uh, man, Bryce is a, is a stud, dude. Like, I, I don't see anything stopping him from being the champ. Like, 
uh, I, and I mean that. Like, I, I, I don't, I'm not just talking my guy up. Like, I really don't see anything stopping him from being a champ. Yeah, definitely, man. He's, uh, he's, he's definitely clicking on all cylinders, undefeated, just took out Barbosa, struck with him. Yeah. That was he's, very, very impressive. He's, he's been very un underestimated, and he, uh, man, he, he's something special. So you would, we could call you a country boy then, right? You said you guys grew up together. I, it is what it is, dude. It is what it is, man. I, yeah. I, I am. I, I, Give me I, a I'm good uh, snake or gator story. You got to have one of the two. I hate, uh, I hate, and, and I'm scared of both. So I give got, me a good one. I got a good one, man. Uh, so me and my buddy was, uh, me and my buddy and my son were all out fishing. And uh, I caught a pretty decent catfish and uh, I was going to put it on the stringer so we could, uh, you know, bring it home, clean it up, and eat it. Uh, and we're fishing, and uh, my son just starts yelling, you know, out of nowhere, you know, what's going on? And and I run over there, dude, and this this snake is just, I mean, it's a big catfish. It just uh, latched on to the, uh, to the catfish's head. The whole snake's mouth was around it, dude. It was one of the biggest snakes I've ever seen. It had been to be about five foot long dude so four or five foot long just a monster and it's got a hold of my my fish and i'm just like man that's your dinner now buddy you you, you deserved it you can have it I, I left it all there and so where did this happen was it as you were reeling it in or you had already had it on the boat okay so i'd already caught the fish and we put on what's called a stringer so you you take uh it's like a small rope run it through its mouth and gills and then tie it up there to the bank and so it's just sitting there on that stringer, you know, where the, I was going to put all my fish on that stringer as I kept catching them. And, and that dude came and stole my dinner, man. Wow. That's nuts. That's um, nuts. Where was this? Uh, I'm back in Arkansas. Uh, it's actually a lake uh, near Pinnacle Mountain. So you can't swim in that lake, right? Or do the snakes yeah. leave you yeah. alone when you're in there? Bro, you can swim in that lake, man. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and there, but there's no g gators in this one then obviously right i mean there can be dude there's alligators. It, tj you're telling me there can be there's the possibility there can be a gator and you have no problem swimming in that same sharing that same body of water bro i just i've been in it my whole life man i just uh frog gigging hunting fishing like i've always been around it like so it's a lot of the times you don't mess with them they won't mess with you oh yeah <laughs> I mean, but there's no reasoning with him, you know. That like, if he's coming at you, it's not like you can go, whoa, 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 hey, what's going on? I thought we were supposed to leave each other. Like, there's no, no reasoning. I, with I don't him. give him the chance now. I just don't give him the chance. Yeah, well, you got a, a pocket knife in your trunks or what? I usually carry on me, man. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is nuts. All right. See, I, I've gone back east. I've been in the south. I've been in um, Dale Hollow Lake in Tennessee. Nice. And it was. One of the cleanest, um, one of the cleanest lakes it was ranked in the whole country. Yeah. I've been in there a few times. And then one day we backed the boat up in a different area where it talked about the different snakes that, that are around. Yeah. And I was like, man, had I known that one, I don't know if I'd be so crazy about it. But I had, I had a blast. I was in that water a lot. Right. There must be rare and few in between definitely no gators i i don't think i'll play with gators and i have heard the same thing about snakes they just leave you alone yeah most of the time dude yeah but but uh gators that's uh, i don't know if i'm messing with that one um all right so listen uh i hope you have a safe camp you know you got about what six weeks yep. five weeks right five hard weeks left and then you get to fight at the apex are you a fan of the apex I mean, well, you know, my, my plans, that's a good question. My, my plans are, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to win this fight. That'll be three in a, three wins in a row for me. And I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. you know, I think at this point, you know, I deserve to be put on a pay-per-view, you know, like one of the reasons I fight is that, that, that feeling you get, you know, when you're under the mm -hmm. light, you start some guy and the, the ref raise your hand, the whole crowd goes loud, you know, and I, I love that feeling. And, and, being at the apex kind of is, is it robs me of that I, I, i'm thankful of the opportunity to, to be there don't get me wrong but man let's put me on a, a pay-per-view put me on one of these cards so i can fight in front of a crowd and get that feeling again because man do i miss it you know i uh it's it's been a while so I, i'm ready to get that feeling back i guess the only advantage i can think of is 
You can hear your coaches better? I mean, oh, like, dude, yeah. Yeah. That, that is a great advantage, you know, being here coaches. And, man, it's uh, – the nerves aren't as bad, you know, either. Like, it's – it's uh, you know, it's just walking you – know, it's just a job, you know, just walking there and fighting, you know. But I guess you got to be reminded that they are watching at home, though. This is true. TJ, thanks for the time today. We had a fun time talking to you. Thanks for sharing that story about the snake. I'm glad you uh, conceded and allowed him to keep the catfish as a souvenir. Uh, you don't want to be going messing with some snakes, especially the ones in the water. Those are the poisonous ones. Anyway, I'm sure you know that. Um, yeah, thank you again, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for your time, guys.